I made my own set of power sword plans by looking at screen reference and some nice looking 3D models. My full size plans were drawn up with Inkscape. The file is in the description if you want to download it and make one of your own. Perfect. So a sword this long made of foam is going to need a core. It's going to need something that can run from the hilt all the way up to the point, more or less, to actually keep it stiff. You know, you don't want to have a foam sword that's all floppy and wobbly. That's, that's just not fun, right? So what I'm going to use for a core is a graphite golf club. What I want is the shaft, which is made of graphite. It's basically fiberglass. I think there's probably something more special about it. But I'm going to remove the golf, golf club head and the grip, and I'll end up with just the shaft, and that is what I'm going to build the entire sword off of. So first thing to do is cut this up and make sure this will fit in the grip. I cut the head off the club with my bandsaw. And cutting the rubber grip from the shaft is pretty easy to do. And once the grip is removed, clean off the tape. One other thing I like to do is sand the cut end of the golf club so it's rounded and less likely to cut the foam sword from the inside. Thankfully, the golf club will fit inside the grip of my plans. So I'll make the top and bottom from two layers of two millimeter what the foam. And I cut two sets of walls, six millimeter and four millimeter thick. I glue the layers of wall together and then glue the set onto one piece of two millimeter foam. I also capped one end. I can see that the fit of the club is good. So I glue the top layer on, making sure the sides are all even. And I'm going to use some urethane casting resin to glue the club inside of the foam box that I made. Now this is why I capped the end. The resin is an easy one-to-one -one mix. It's almost water thin, so it'll fill all in around the club easily. I just need to be careful not to over pour and make a mess on the sides of the grip. That's going to take 15, 20 minutes to set up, but unlike five minute epoxy, in 15 to 20 minutes, it's going to be completely done and I'm going to be able to continue. While the resin set up, I cut out my template for the diamond pattern that goes on the grip. I cut apart the pattern to make a pair of templates, which I used to mark the places to cut out on the second set of two millimeter foam that I had cut previously. Cut out the pattern, and I can use a wooden coffee stir stick to make the diamonds smaller. And then I have the grip pattern for the hilt of the sword. Now that the resin is set up, I can use contact cement to glue the pattern piece to the hilt, dropping the diamonds in when the rest is set. With the grip finished, I check the size compared to my plants. Oh, it's way thicker. I really messed up the measurement there, like a lot. It should be 22. This is way thicker than it should be by a lot. That's not cool. All right, well, that's, that's the thickness it's gonna be. I'm not changing that now, I'm gonna just deal with it. It'll be all right, mostly. The next piece is the pommel, which is a simple fork piece. I cut five layers of six millimeter what the foam and glue them together into a block. I cut the block out as one piece. I can get the sides to be equal that way. It's much easier than cutting everything at first and then trying to glue them all together and line them all up. The top and bottom have a curve to them, so I just sand that in with my belt sander. And I'll also add the bevel that goes in the bottom edges. Then I can snip away the fuzzy stuff on the corners. And I have a solid pommel that's ready to be glued on. The next piece is the cross guard. I cut it out of my pattern and then cut it into smaller sections. And so I've pretty much got the hilt and the pommel done which is nice. Next, I'm going to be doing the whole cross guard piece. And there's a lot of stuff going on here. And so one of the things I'm looking at doing is breaking this apart into smaller pieces. Now, each of these are going to be dimensional, but I'm going to make all of these parts and put them together to make this one piece instead of trying to cut everything all out at once, because that's going to be weird. The main center part is where the coin will go. And it's basically a block again, kind of like the pommel. First, I'll cut out two layers of six millimeter foam, and then cut two more layers of four millimeter foam. That's the black stuff. Then I need two more partial layers that'll go on either side of the golf club. I glued everything together with just enough room for the graphite club to fit inside. A quick look lets me know that I need a little more room for the club to fit properly. I can use my sanding drum with my rotary tool and round the bottom out inside of each half of my centerpiece. Apply contact cement and stick the two halves together. And just like the pommel, this stack needs to be cut into the right shape. 
It's trickier to cut this one on my bandsaw because there are some small curves and these little step details. And it's only tricky because of the length of my blade. You see, this blade is specifically made to cut foam. So it's thinner, but it's longer. So the smaller curves are a little harder to do. Instead of cutting off the curves, I use a 22 millimeter four center bit to make the curve nearly perfect. I just need to let up on the drill bit often so the larger pieces of foam can escape and they won't just simply tear up the parts that I'm trying to keep. And now that I've got all these curves cut, it's easy to get the rest on the bandsaw. There are a few details that are cut for the top, all from different thicknesses of foam. Okay, these are most of the layered pieces that go into the center of the cross guard, you know, except for the stuff that goes to the, but for the center part. I just need to make the coin holder, but I need to make sure it fits the coin. So a viewer by the name of Joe Horde from Rhode Island sent me, I'm in California, so Rhode Island sounds like a ways away from me, uh, sent me a copy or a mold that he made of a coin. And what's cool is the mold that he made is, is a silicon mold, but this is actually made with plumbing caulk. This is, this is silicon caulk you'd use for putting in a bathtub or something else. So, but it totally works. I'm holding it upside down, there you are. Uh, but it, that totally works and I can tell because it's got that really strong vinegar smell and I've done this. I've done this type of mold because it's a very stiff silicon mold. I've done this type of mold to take the texture from one part of a, of a deck on a sailboat in order to put it onto another part that I was patching because there's a, a hole punched in the fiberglass deck, right? So got it all filled in with epoxy, got it all doing good, but then put on a, a, a coat of the uh, epoxy resin and get a mold of the texture and bring it over and put the texture back down. The texture didn't line up perfectly, but you know what? It's It works really, really well. It's not, uh, but anyway, that's boat repair is something else and not something I've done, but I'm certainly not an expert in molding coins. This is something I can handle. But what's cool is Joe sent me a couple of, a couple of uh, casts just to be sure. So I got one that looks like he pulled from one of his props because it's got uh, a little bit of torn foam on the back. And he sent me a couple of his, uh, his castings, which this is gonna give me a chance to make sure that whatever coin holder I make is gonna be able to actually hold the coin. This coin is, if that was intentional, that's awesome. About 42 millimeters across. It's 42, perfect, okay. To make the holder, I think I want to use some 10 millimeter foam. I should have enough of it here. Yeah, I can get a couple out of this. All right. To cut out the circle for the coin holder, I use my circle cutter from Cause Tools. I set the arm to be a 42 millimeter circle and then set the circle cutter over my foam. Now I'm using a smaller piece of foam, so I need a little support from some floor mat scrap. Simply turning the handle cuts a circle and the threads inside moves the blade down as you turn the handle. I set the arm to make a 52 millimeter circle and I can see my target dot that's right in the center. I line up to that dot again and I can cut a ring of foam very easily. And I purposely didn't cut all the way through so the foam parts wouldn't move around as I made the second cut. For the proper coin holder look, I bevel the sides of the grinding stone. I also clean up the inside my finished cuts are not as nice as the costume cuts are. I can actually pick the best two, that's kind of fun. Glue all this down, and I can make the tubes, and I can make the lotus leaves, and I can do the rest. The lotus leaves are the flames, I don't know which they are. I apply all the flat details first, so when I flip it over, I don't squish the coin holder. Then I glue the coin holders on. Realistically, I could just glue that right on right now if I wanted to. I think I probably should. No, I think I'll glue the rest of the stuff on first. I bet it'll be easier if I do that first. There's a couple of round details that go on the shoulder right here, the shoulder of the cross guard. And I don't have 15 millimeter round dowels that I can find, which is funny, because I should have that stuff on hand. But what I do have is 15 millimeter round half dowels which means I'm gonna to get to glue these together and make a full dowel, which is kind of counterintuitive, but you know, it works. <laughs> I'm gonna wrap these with, uh, wrap these with some four millimeter foam anyway, so this will be fine. I glue the two halves together and cut two pieces at 40 millimeters long. 
I make a strip of 4 millimeter thick HD foam that's 48 millimeters wide and cut two pieces just long enough to wrap all the way around the dowels that I had made. When I glue the wrap on, I have a little piece of 4 millimeter foam off to one side. You can see it. It's the one part that doesn't have glue. That lets me keep the dowel in the center and makes the space for the green rhinestone that I'll have to glue in after everything's painted. I round off the corners of these guys so they match the sword that's in the shelf. And with a little contact cement, the tubes are attached to the cross guard. Now I just need the flame design on the sides. I'm going to cut them out of some heavy duty floor mat foam. So I've just traced the outline on and I can cut these out straight and then I can cut them down. So, but um, I think floor mat foam is, is the way to go for getting these pieces the easiest. Just make them solid and be done. Because the foam is so thick, the bandsaw is the best way to cut it. There's just no way I could get a 90 degree cut like this with a razor knife. So I've got all these pieces cut out. And what I want to make them do is be dimensional. So what my plan is to make them be wider at the end close to the cross guard and then get a little bit thinner on the way out. About 20 millimeters out here and 40 millimeters on this end. This one bit of kneeling pad happened to be considerably thicker than the rest. So it looks a little funny now, but I'm going to cut them all down. In order to figure that out, I make a mark at each end and I can use some two millimeter foam to make a straight line to go to each mark. And then I can follow that line to get the wedge cuts made in each of the pieces. I trace the patterns again on some two millimeter foam and cut out the raised detail that goes onto each of these wedge shapes. I cut them a little bigger than what I really needed because the angled sides are going to be a little longer and I can always grind the edges down flush once each part is glued together. Okay, so before I glue these parts on, I want to get the blade cut out and made because the ends here need to interact with the blade and I want to make sure I get all the parts cut to fit correctly. So I'm going to set all these pieces aside and I'll start working on the blade. Because my pattern is many sheets taped together, I mark the center line with a ruler and then fold the pattern in half and make just one cut for both sides using a straight edge. Now something else I've done is I did the math and added a smaller outline for the blade. And this is where I'm actually making my marks for cutting. Each side will fold a little and it'll make a peak. So they need to be a little longer for the blade to be just the right size and not end up being skinny. So I've got my bit set within the Dremel and, and the router plate here, cutting almost all the way through the foam, not quite. I've got about a millimeter's worth of foam left that I'm not cutting through because that'll create a V-groove that I want to go from the very point of the sword all the way to the midpoint down here. This will allow the, the sword to get a, a peak because the sword's got kind of a peak in the center, right? And that'll make it a very straight peak all the way down because of uh, cutting out this V-groove. So that's the first thing I want to put in. Then I can cut the blade out and then I can glue them together. I hold the Dremel against the ruler and cut right down the center of each side. I found that cutting it twice, going from point A to point B and then going back to point A, gets me the cleanest V-groove sides. It's probably just the way that the cutting bit spins. That way the fuzz that's left in the center is pretty easy to clean out. If I only cut in one direction, this fuzz will still be attached to one side of the groove and that'll get in the way when gluing. And I do all the final cuts after the V-groove is cut. That way there's enough foam to support the base of the router attachment. I use an acid brush to get the contact cement just into the V-groove and not all over the inside of the sword. And I can help them dry with a hair dryer. And then simply fold the sword halves to get that peak in the center of the blade. Okay, it is definitely more than I was anticipating, but that's okay. That just means, that just means I know for sure the golf club will fit. So this does have a higher peak than I thought it would. Uh, I'm not upset because the golf club will fit. But this is why I bothered to go through and do the whole V groove on the backside is to be able to get that peak on both sides of the sword. I say easy. It kind of is. It kind of isn't. It's mostly easy. It's just different. But um, I like the fact that there isn't an actual seam. This is. This is the original material still all the way down. So on the flat edge of the sword, it's going to look like a solid piece because, well, it is. And I'm not too worried about having an edge on the side. So I'm going to glue the other one together and then I need to go through and 
grind down this peak to be kind of flat so the two can glue together. And again, I'm not worried about getting it all the way to the very edge. It can be three quarters of the way through, two thirds of the way through. I could have a, a slightly flat edge on the side just to give it a little more meat. Let's get this one bent. I flatten the tops of the edges on both halves. This makes for more area for glue and lets the side look a little more sword-like. Before I glue these together, I wanna make a little diamond piece that goes inside It's not very big, but that's okay. I want to make a little diamond piece that goes inside, so when I put the golf club down the middle of it, I know the golf club's going down the middle of it. So let me make a couple of those. We're only going to need like two or three. Yeah, one, two, three. Perfect. I'll just make those out of floor mat foam, because who cares? I worked out that each one is 18 millimeters tall and 20 millimeters long on each side. And because the golf club tapers, I mark where each diamond will go and then I measure that section. And that way I can use the closest sized round leather punch that I've got to make the correct hole in each diamond. Now these are not perfect, they're just close enough. I can glue the diamonds in on one side and then glue the two sides together. I take great care to be sure that the sword blade is gluing together straight. It'd be very, very easy to just stick them together and end up with a curved blade. And then I can slip the parts together again. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's not glued, that's great. I need to figure out how to cut these side pieces to fit over the blade. I can eyeball where they're all gonna go and mark it with a dot, and then measure each dot to see just how thick the blade is at that spot. This lets me cut a wedge shape out of the cross guard that'll fit over the blade. A quick check of the parts lets me know that what I've got is working. Just one more small panel to add. I cut that pattern from the base of the blade, and then cut two more pieces from two millimeter foam. I make a pencil groove on one side for the peak of the fold, and then another groove on the top side for a decorative panel line. Now these are just glued right to the base of the blade so that they meet with the cross guard. Then I start gluing on the side pieces to the cross guard. And I'm really happy with how this is turning out. The golf club is still not glued in. I want to be able to paint all the parts first. All the red parts are going to need a couple of coats of light gray and white just to cover over the different foam colors and get an even coat of red paint. And the cross guard is mostly just red, so I need to paint the whole thing gray, and then I can coat it with some white. While the paint dries, I want to cast my own set of coins. Now, this is the same casting resin that I used before. I'm just going to pour it into the mold that Joe made. And it's a clear amber when it pours, but it turns to a solid color once it sets up, and then it can be pulled out of the mold. It takes about 15 minutes. Both of these coins will get a coat of gloss black spray paint followed by a coat of some brilliant gold paint. The blade was painted with a solid silver. And then I cut out the decorative pattern that goes in the blade, and graphite powder was used to darken in the patterns. Then I can use a gloss Mod Podge spray to fix the graphite powder on the blade. The cross guard is painted red a couple of times. It's tricky to get a really good red. On the grip, the diamond pattern is painted gold, and all the raised areas are just black. And when the red dries, I paint the edges of the cross guard black as a base layer for the gold paint. I have some green rhinestones that I can super glue into the cross guard. And I super glue the coins into the holders. <laughs> they're a tight fit. I need to get them in place before the glue sets and they're crooked. Contact cement the cross guard to the grip. And I'll just use super glue to fix the blade to the cross guard. But I've also have some Gorilla Glue on the golf club itself, which will stick to the diamonds inside the blade and that's what's gonna actually get me a good solid hold on the blade. Most of the materials I use for this project, I already had in the shop. I put a list in the description. <laughs> I've got a Red Ranger power sword. This thing was kind of an adventure to get put together this week. Had a lot of weird things happen this week. And, you know, 
made a little bit of an extra effort with the intro there in order to just go along with the sword because it seemed like a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun putting the sword together. I had a lot of fun putting the opening credits together. Did you guys like the opening credits? That was, that was interesting. That's not something I can do every week, but uh, I hope to do another Power Rangers prop at some point in the future so I get to use those credits again. But let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the sword. Let me know what you think of the opening credits, please. Oh, and if you want to make your own sword, you can, because the pattern that I made for this episode, there's a file, the link in the description, that's free. You can download it. You can make your own sword if you'd like. And I have a few thank yous to throw out here. I want to say thank you very much to Joe. Now, there's a couple of Joes. This Joe is Gundam Joe, the Joe that's usually in my shop, who came by and helped out with getting some of these parts painted and put together at the last minute so I could try and make my deadline of getting the uh, video out this week. Uh, Joe didn't appear in the episode because it seemed a little odd for him to suddenly appear in the episode and not be in the credits where Felicia was in the credits but wasn't appearing in the episode. Uh, and also, thank you very much to Joe because, Joe, you got me a mold for the coin. The whole reason this sword has been put on hold for the better part of a year, there's another obvious reason if any of you remember 2020, was because I couldn't get a hold of a coin in order to make a mold. I can't find any files that are worth 3D printing. I don't really have the skill to sculpt this type of a coin. So Joe, thank you very much for providing me with a mold for one of your coins. This turned out really well and it was the inspiration I needed to get this sword going. And lastly, I really want to say thank you to Jesse, who also happens to be a patron, because he actually wrote the theme song. That's a brand new arrangement that, uh, that Jesse put together specifically for me to make it kind of sound like the Power Rangers theme, but not actually be the Power Rangers theme. And Seth from Dad's Underwear, it's a fun band. Those two are in a band together, you should look them up. He helped out with a lot of the guitars. So the two of you guys, thank you very much for the theme music. Thank you, Felicia, for appearing in the credits. Thank you, Joe, and thank you, Joe, and thank all of you for watching. And I know there's gonna be lots of different ways that you can make a Red Ranger power sword, but this is Go Go Mighty Foman Odin Makes. I wanna thank Daryl Lee, Prince Prime's Workshop, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.